Lineagain, or Line, is a command line tool for initializing closure projects and managing their artifacts and dependencies. In this video, we'll be covering how to create new projects, use templates, install and use new libraries and plugins, run tests, and compile jar files for end user distribution. If you navigate to lineagain.org, you'll find installation instructions on the homepage. The only pre installation dependency Lineagain has is Java 1.6 or later. Once you've installed it, you can run the line.help or line help command to see what tasks are included by default. So as, as you can see, there's quite a few tasks that are available. Uh, we're only going to touch on a couple of the most common ones, most commonly used ones today. Uh, but I encourage you to go through here and kind of get a feel for what's available. There's a lot of good stuff. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the new, the new task. And basically, this is what you'll use to create new projects. So we'll do line new, help pipe this into less because there's a lot of info here. All right, um, so here's an example usage. Uh, as you can see, it's fairly straightforward. The two primary arguments are template name and project name. Project name is self-explanatory. So let's talk about templates. Landing in templates describe the project directory structure, dependencies, and provide some basic boilerplate code and documentation. Line ships with four templates. If we scroll to the bottom of this page, you can see we have these subtasks. Each of these subtasks is actually a template. Um, of the four, you'll most frequently use the default and app templates. Uh, use default for libraries and app for any sort of application you'll be distributing to end users. The template and plugin templates are for authoring line plugins or templates of your own. The templates can be published to Clojars and used just like the included templates. As you can see, there's over 1,500 templates available, and it's a great place to start projects from. And if you come up with templates that you find useful, share them back with the community. For us, though, we're going to be pretty set with the app template. So let's go ahead and create a new app project. Find new app, and we'll do HN Scraper for Hacker News Scraper. And there we go. Uh, if we ls, jump inside our new directory. And get some space, run tree. All right, so relatively um, bare bones project structure, uh, but it's got everything we need. So let's fire up Vim and take a look at what the content of some of these files. So changelog is just a semantic version uh, changelog document with some example entries. License, uh, you have to look over that, see if it suits your needs. The readme has a bunch of fix me's, uh, but the usage section is um, pretty useful because this describes how to run um, your application after it's been compiled. So we can come back to here later, but the other file that you're going to be spending a lot of time in is project.clj. This is the main description of your project. It has a bunch of metadata, um, but then it has this dependency section. And this is where you'll be adding any sort of third-party libraries or uh, libraries you've written that are stored locally that you want to include in this project. So this is the main, we're going to be spending a lot of time in this file. Um, but for now, I want to step back a bit and check out core and test, uh, two other boilerplate files. And with the app template, this is one of the main things you get. Uh, you get this gen class symbol in your namespace, and then you have this, the hyphen main function. And this is the, this is what describes to the um, compiler what the entry point to your application is. Uh, so right now it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, all it does is print hello world. The test does even less. All it does is fail. Um, so let's go ahead and fail that test. Oops, break this up. All right, so we do line test. There we go. We have our failing test. Um, if we run help on that, there's one thing I'd like to point out in there. So down bottom, there's a section here that shows how to target a single test. So if you have a project with a lot of tests, or for some reason somebody's added really long running unit tests, which no one should ever do, um, this is how you would target just the tests that you're interested in and avoid the rest. Okay, so let's clear some space. The next task we're going to talk about is the run task, and this simply runs your code. For the application, this is going to look for that main function, and it's going to run it. So, hello world. Boom. There it is. In all its glory. So, 
so far we've just taken a look at all the boilerplate stuff that was created for us, uh, but one of the most common things uh, you'll be doing in a new project is importing some third-party libraries. So like I said earlier, uh, the idea of this fake project is that it's going to be a hacker news scraper, so we're going to need a scraping library. So we could pull up Clojars or Maven Central and dig around there, which is fine, and sometimes that's the best thing to do, but Linegan actually ships with a search function that you can use um, if you if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, or don't feel like pulling up um, the browser, you can use search to dig around. So let's check out the help. Again, pretty straightforward. Now there's two things that you should pay attention to here. This being the first one. They are not kidding. If you've never run search before, it has to download a ton of indices, and it takes a long time. So just go get a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, answer me some emails, because it takes a while. Uh, the second thing is this, that you can also pass in a second parameter for fetching successive pages. So if it's a really long set of results, it's not going to dump them all back to you. You're going to have to actually go back and request multiple pages. So these are examples of um, Lucene searches, uh, or the queries that you can use to look for different libraries. So the one we're interested in is this description one. Um, and that can be abbreviated to D. And we are going to operate under the assumption that scraping will be in the description of any third-party library that will, you know, that we'd be interested in. So let's pipe this into less because I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of it. All right. So right up top here, you see we've got this showing page one of three. That's important. So that's how many pages that were in our results. So scrolling down, it looks like we have. Okay, basically just three libraries, just lots of different versions of these libraries. None of which is really what I'm looking for, I don't think. So let's see what else we have. Check page two. All right, so what else do we have here? Um, better. Okay, taken. I've, all right, so I've used taken before. So I'm going to copy this, um, the dependency line again, line right here. And copy that to clipboard and we are going to exit out of less and fire up project.clj again and paste it all right so now we have the taken screenscape scraper added as a dependency let's close out of here we're going to run line depths to import it okay uh, and then let's go ahead and use it so the next task we're going to talk about is the REPL task. And a REPL is a read evaluate print loop. Um, it's sort of like uh, an interpreter in Python. Uh, if you use Scala, then Scala has a, I think SBT has a REPL that you can use. Um, same idea. So let's just fire ours up, line REPL. Okay. And it loads our project namespace by default. So we can have access to that main function that prints out hello world. There we go. Um, but we also have access to, we can import the third party libraries in our dependencies. So we're going to require um, taken.core, uh, we're going to refer to grab setup config and text. Okay, all right. And then, so we'll do, we just want to grab the very top story in Hacker News. So, HM top, we are um, object name. So, all right, so we're going to grab the connection, um, the setup config from URL HTTPS news dot y combinator dot com. Uh, user agent uh, Mozilla. So, CIOA hyphen no, and okay. Right, so now we are going to title. We'll store our, or we'll store the, the top news stories title here. So, we want to grab from a thing class on Hacker News. We want the title class and the uh, Anchor tag, we want the very first one, and it is text. So boom, hold up the curly, and then two parens. All right, so if we did that right, VHN top, 
Oh, man. App.net is shutting down. That is a real bummer. I have no idea what that is. All right, so moving on. Um, okay, let's get out of here. Everything works, so that's cool. Uh, I'm not going to get too involved with the REPL right now, uh, but I will be putting together some dedicated REPL videos pretty soon, and it's pretty interesting. You can do some awesome stuff with it, especially once you start getting into like breakpoints and debugging. It's just really, really, it's a really useful tool and definitely worth taking the time to learn. But that's not what we're learning now. Um, so the next thing I want to go over is uh, once your project is at a distributable state, um, you're going to want to package it up and, and compile it. So to do so, line ships with the uber jar command. Let's look at the help. All right, so basically packages it all up into two different files. One of them is suitable for um, importing it if it's on the right class path, but there's a standalone version that's what you want to distribute. So let's go ahead and build it. So we'll say line uber jar. All right, there's our standalone. Let's grab it from here. And remember these, the syntax on how to run this was actually in that readme. So we'll just paste that there. Hello world, boom. All right, so um, good stuff. So the next thing I wanna talk about are profiles. So it's often gonna be the case that you're gonna to wanna to include certain libraries during development, but exclude them from the final jar. So for instance, maybe you wanna have a few additional data directories or testing libraries. Um, since we're using the app template, let's pull that back up. So project.clj, you can see we already have a profiles entry here. Now, if you were using default, I don't believe it has profiles included already, in which case you would just add it. Um, there's nothing super special about it. It's just another uh, symbol. So we are going to, let's see, am I in the right? Yeah. So we're going to go down here and we are going to, actually before I create a new profile, let's just look at what we have available already. So if I do line show profiles, all right. So here is our UberJar profile that's defined in um, project.clj. So open it back up and we are going to create a dev profile. And the only thing we are going to include in the dev profile is uh, dependencies, dependencies. Oh, it has to be a symbol. And then we're going to pull in the expectations testing library, which is a minimalist uh, unit test library. Pretty awesome. 2.1.8, I believe it's the most recent version. So clean up our parens. All right, so let's take that out of here. Okay, so now, um, okay, so before we actually, before I do anything with that, let me, uh, well, here, okay, let's create a new file first. So let's do vim, and we want test hn scraper, uh, simple test.clj, and in this file, we are going to do namespace uh, hn scraper dot simple test, and we are going to require expectations and we want everything we want it all so pop this back up here all right and let's write a failing test that's identical to the one that ships with um, the app template so we're going to compare zero and one which will fail exit out of here okay so now let's see here so okay so the first thing i want to do is kind of show um, what the default test output looks like all right, so this is our default output um, up here, right? Now this down here is our cleaner expectations output. So I don't really want to run these both together. I mean, I mean it's okay, but it's kind of noisy. Uh, and really the whole point of ins installing expectations is to get this minimalist output, this much cleaner, simpler output. So having it kind of buried with all the um, default outputs, sort of a, it's sort of counterproductive. So what we want to do is, luckily, Expectations has a sister project called Line Expectations, which is a plugin, and this is our first exposure to plugins. And what this does is it adds new tasks to Line again. So again, if I do Line Help, 
these are all our available tasks. And if I open up the project.clj file, I'm going to create a brand new section called plugins. And I want line expectations version 0.0.8. And everything is closed. So now if I close this out, and if I run, let's see, so I'll do line help pipe this into less because there's more of it now. All right, so the first thing it did, you saw it for a second there, is it retrieved or pulled down the jar files, right? Now this is important because before we were explicitly running line depths to pull them down, you don't have to do that. So for a lot of these commands, again, they'll pull down um, any sort of unmet dependencies in the project. So there's that again. But here, now, we have this new task for expectations that was added by including that plugin. So we're going to exit out of here. We'll run line expect, oops, expect, cannot type expectations. There we go. There we go. Oh, much cleaner um, and faster. So let's fix our test that it's passing. And we could probably just delete it, but just so you can see what the successful test looked like. All right, we're cool. So let's just open up project again. So we've got profiles which define um, dependencies for this project that you don't want to include in the final jar. You've got plugins that you want to include in this project, and we have dependencies that we want to include in this project. Well. That's great, but sometimes you want to have a plugin. Usually, these are more like uh, utility plugins um, or like convenience tooling that you want to have available for every single project you do. Um, so, to do that, uh, in your home directory, you've got a dot line file. If you're on Mac or um, Linux, if you're on Windows, I have no idea what you have, but it's probably a line file in your user directory uh, or a line directory in your main user home directory. Uh, so if you create a profiles.clj file there, you can de define a user profile. And we're going to do that. So let's just do vim dot line and we want profiles um, profiles.clj dot right, yeah. Um, so then we're going to do, let's see, uh, we will make a the only section we want here is a user profile. And we're going to have plugins. And for our plugins, again, this is going to have oops, this plugins. We want to pull one in called line ancient, which is awesome. What it does is it uh, it'll scan your project if you uh, for outdated dependencies. Uh, super useful. I use it all the time. So I actually have an automated script that runs once a day to check my profile plugins that in that file I just showed you that I was just editing. Uh, it'll check for outdated, outdated dependencies there and then um, update them for me. So everything's always up to date uh, for the global plugins. Okay, so let's run line, we'll just do line help less again. You'll see it's pulling down all the dependencies for ancient and here are our tasks. Right up top, we've got this new task that's added by Line Ancient. So now, um, let's clear some space. So let's just check out the help. So Line Ancient help. All right, so here are our subtasks. Um, the main one that I want to show you first is check. So we'll do Line ancient and you actually don't have because it's the default yeah you don't actually have to specify the check subtask that's just what it does anyway so we'll do line ancient and this will run against my current project the hn scraper project and look at that we have an outdated dependency um so what we can do is line ancient upgrade and i think is it oh let's just do help on this
Oops. I think I did that wrong. Oh, it ran it. Okay, hold on. So let me just see something. So let's do line ancient check. Okay, so I think what I'm just going to do is we will just open up project.clj, head over to expectations, and just turn that into a 9. And then we'll do line depths. Um, okay, I, th I think maybe that error was because it didn't have permission to change the file. Uh, pretty sure that's what the deal was. Anyway, so let's just see if we... So now if we run this again, should be fine now. Okay, and then if we do... Uh, be fine. So we'll do line... I guess I'll just run the test again and see if spec patients. All right, there we go. So we're good. So the last thing to note about global plugins and dependencies is that uh, the more you add, the slower lining is going to boot. So you might not notice at first. Uh, you're good for a while, but if you have a ton of plugins and dependencies, you're you're going to feel it. So be selective in what you add there. So that wraps up. Uh, the Linux and Basics course. We've covered how to create a new project using the new command, how to install dependencies and plugins explicitly using depths and implicitly using most of the other tasks, how to run test files, how to run your app, um, as well as how to compile an Uber jar for distribution. We touched upon project specific global profiles and went over how to add and use dependencies and plugins in both of them. Uh, so hopefully this is giving you a solid foundation in Linux and usage. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay informed when we release new content. And thanks for watching.